Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to talk about how climate change will affect us, the wine lovers. The fact is, our planet's climate changes and not for the better. Some of us simply accept it, some strive to do something about it, and others choose to ignore it. But regardless of our own opinion, these climate changes will affect us, the wine lovers as well. Scientists predict that global temperature increase from human-made greenhouse gases will continue. Extreme weather events such as drought, wildfires and excessive rainfall will also increase and intensify. Wine is an agricultural product and its production is substantially dependent on climate. At the same time, wine's production and transportation also contributes to climate change. For example, wine is transported from its place of origin to final consumers all around the globe, and packaging together with transportation is responsible for more than half of the carbon footprint in the wine industry. But no matter if we take the action to improve the situation or we simply choose to ignore it, these are five changes that you and me, wine connoisseurs, are going to see very soon and that will directly affect us. Due to change of the global temperature and more frequent weather extremes, current winemaking regions might not be able to support the same grape varieties they used to, meaning more heat and drought-tolerant grapes might replace them. Or grapes that better preserve acidity in hot environment might be more suitable option for winemaking. In some way we see this in Bordeaux when in 2021 six new grapes were approved to tackle the climate change. But there is another aspect we must consider. Almost every winemaking grape variety is of Vitis vinifera species. Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir, Riesling, Cabernet Sauvignon, you name it. Vitis vinifera produces great wines, but it is sensitive. Some might call it capricious. It is sensitive to different diseases, sensitive to cold and heat, drought and so on. Therefore, production of wine is limited to those specific golden pockets where Vitis vinifera feels good. And even then, growing it can be struggle and most often times will require use of chemicals to combat different types of fungal diseases. With climate change, it can become an even bigger struggle. Therefore, working with hardy, fungal-resistant grape varieties that are either hybrids, meaning crossings between different species or completely different species altogether, might be the future of the wine world, at least in some wine regions. Some hybrid grapes such as Rondo, Regent and Muscaris have already achieved recognition amongst winemakers and even wine lovers. So yes, we might find more and more grape varieties unknown to us on the wine labels. As I discussed before, new grape varieties might appear on the labels, but new wine regions might also emerge. With climate zones shifting, areas that previously could not support quality winemaking might become suitable or even perfect for it. However, on much sadder note, we might also lose some winemaking regions that we all know and love. It is because quality grape growing there simply will not be possible or growing grapes in these areas will become too expensive for winemaking. I would also like to point out that it not necessarily has to do with increasing average temperatures. Sometimes it might be due to extreme weather events such as excessive drought. While wine, compared to other crops, has relatively low water requirement, it still cannot survive completely without it. And if there is no water or water use is limited and controlled by the government, that might lead to completely abandoning wine growth in that specific region altogether. Changes in the wine bottle weight is probably one thing that will not negatively affect final consumer. And for those who believe that heavier wine bottles somehow correlates with the wine's quality, it does not. Wine bottles usually weigh around 700 to 800 grams, some even can reach up to one kilogram 
which is roughly around 2.2 pounds. It makes absolutely no sense to fill wine in heavy glass bottles, and it is not energy efficient to ship these bottles not only to the other side of the world, but even to the closest export market. Production and transportation of wine bottles generates carbon emissions, while reducing bottle weight can have significantly positive impact on the wine industry's carbon footprint. I am happy that many wine critics and commentators have started to talk about it. However, due to current geopolitical situation, it is actually difficult to get any glass at all, therefore transition to lightweight bottles might slow down. But I'm sure that in the future we will see more and more wines in lightweight bottles. I know and understand that the wine community is still very, very conservative. Therefore, moving away from beloved glass bottle might be very difficult even to dedicated climate advocates. But we must at least start talking about it. As I mentioned before, glass bottle is heavy to transport around Plus, it is round, thus not very space efficient. There are many packaging options that are much lighter, more space efficient, and requires less energy to recycle. We all know famous bag-in-box, tetra packs, and pouches. And even though these do not provide the same aging potential, meaning shelf life, as glass bottle, bag-in-box definitely stores wine longer after it has been opened. Other options we might see more are tin cans. I think they are are fun, easy to open, and what's more important, available in different single-serve sizes. What is even better, comparing to other glass bottle alternatives, tin cans can withstand pressure, therefore great for sparkling wines. Lastly come other different options where our wine can be packed in the future, such as light frugal bottle that is made from recycled paperboard or flattened echo bottles. No matter what the future brings, I am sure we're going to see more and more wine packaged in different, more sustainable formats and materials. Shipping wine in bulk and bottling at the country of consumption might be a very interesting topic to some of the fine wine lovers. If I'm not mistaken, Chateau Mouton was one of the first or very first to put this information on the label bottled at Chateau. And soon after, the fact that the wine was bottled in the same place where it was made became as a quality sign on its own. For fine and collector's wine, I don't see this changing anytime soon, as it is essential to ensure both provenance and authenticity of these wines. And what about the other 95% of wine produced that can and should be drunk as young and fresh as possible? I am sure in the future we're going to see more and more everyday wines shipped in bulk and bottled at the country of consumption. It is cheaper, more energy efficient, and more sustainable. And it also gives us option to collect empty wine bottles and send them for recycling or even possible refill. I have not discussed many factors caused by the climate change that we already see today, such as increase of the average alcohol or smoke taint that we see in so many wines in the winemaking regions close to areas prone to wildfires. But in this video, I wanted to highlight these five as they might be harder for wine lovers to accept. Because wine industry is quite conservative, it is not only important that we act, but we also embrace these changes in order to save the wine regions, grape varieties, and wine styles that we love so much. Cheers to more sustainable future. If this was too depressing, pour yourself a glass of champagne and watch my other video on champagne winemaking region.